Kevin Lawler Fitzpatrick, Chairperson of the Tinnakill Lawler House Restoration Committee. I'm also a direct descendant of the famous Lawler family, uh, coming from Richard Lawler's side of the family. I am Dan Carmody, I'm the Secretary of the Tinnakill Lawler House Restoration Committee. Hello, I'm Mary Carmody, Treasurer of the Tinnakill Lawler House Restoration Project. I'm Tom Lawler, Assistant Treasurer of the Tinnakill Lawler House Restoration Committee. Tinnakill is the historical home of the famous Lawler family dating back to 17-1800s. Tinnakill, Chocnaquilla, the house in the woods. Tinnakill, the home of the famous Lawler family, is situated just outside the picturesque village of Raheen in County Leash in Ireland. As we walk down this avenue to Tinnakill House, we are walking back into history. This was the home of Honest Pat Lawler, one of the first Catholics elected to Westminster Parliament since the reign of James II of England. It was in this house built at approximately 1770 that many political moves were planned, as it was the venue for such political giants as Daniel O'Connell, the Liberator, who was responsible for achieving Catholic emancipation in 1829. The following year, both O'Connell and Pat Lawler were returned as MPs to Westminster, a momentous milestone for Irish nationalism. Pat Lawler in the following year made a declaration at a public meeting in Marlborough, now Port Leash, that it was no longer going to pay the hated tithes, which went to the upkeep of the established church, the Protestant church, this set in train the tide wars, which eventually led to the abolition of the tides. As a result of his decision, Pat Lawler had 25 sheep seized by the bailiffs. Lawler retrieved them by a writ of Clevin. He knew he would not have them for uh, long, but in the meantime he had a template made with the word tide on them, and had the sheep branded on both sides with, with that word. The sheep were offered for sale at a number of venues, but there were no offers for them and eventually they were shipped to England where most of them died from exhaustion. James Finton Lawler was the eldest son of Honest Pat and he's one of the most important nationalists of the 19th century. He championed the cause of the small town farmer and the farm labourer. He had an extremely sharp political mind. In the long struggle for freedom, he was the first Irish nationalist to link the land question to the national aspiration for independence. He wrote extensively on the land issue and was strongly opposed to the pacifist policies of both his father, Honest Pat, and Daniel O'Connell, and was at times openly hostile to the latter's policies. In his earlier career, he was involved in the Young Ireland movement, and after the abortive uprising in Cashville, he was captured and sentenced to six months in prison. His writings and political philosophy have impacted on the thinking of some of the leaders of the 1916 Rising, such as Patrick Pearce and James Connolly, and in more recent times on Eamon de Valera, former Taoiseach and President of Ireland. Another son, Richard, was elected to Westminster and was a friend and lifelong supporter of Charles Stuart Parnell, the uncrowned King of Ireland. Richard, like his brothers, James, Fintan and Peter, was involved in the Young Ireland Movement and was also involved in the abortive uprising at Cashel, County Tipperary but escaped capture and imprisonment. He reformed the independence club founded by his father, which was dedicated to the achievement of Irish freedom, but by peaceful means. Peter Lawler, brother of James Finton and Richard, 
was also involved in the Young Ireland movement and in, and in the Cashel event, but he also escaped back to Tinnakill. Like his brother Richard, he had acquired an engineering degree from Trinity College, Dublin, and after the Cashel debacle, he took ship to Australia where he was employed as an engineer by the Victoria State Railway Company. However, he was lured to the gold mines at Ballarat where he hoped to make his fortune. However, there was serious unrest among the miners because of heavy taxation on their claims, irrespective of the fact whether they struck gold or not. Matters came to a head when one of their number was murdered in a hotel and the police refused to investigate the event. The miners took matters into their own hands and burned the hotel. P police were alerted and the miners threw up a makeshift stockade at Eureka and elected Peter Lawler as their leader. It was here that the famous Southern Cross flag, which is so celebrated in Australia to the present time, was designed and made. However, the stockade was overrun by the police and militia. Upwards of 25 miners were killed, many wounded among them. Peter Lawler, who had to go into hiding with a price on his head. However, he emerged from hiding after a court case against a number of miners captured at the Eureka Stockade was acquitted, were acquitted. Peter Lawler was persuaded to stand for Parliament and was elected and thus began a long and illustrious career as a legislator. He held many appointments in government and was Speaker of the House of Parliament for many years until he retired. He is still regarded in the highest esteem in his adopted country and is known as the father of Australian democracy. There is a national holiday celebrated every December commemorating the stance taken by the miners at the Eureka Stockade. Uh, to date, uh, over €100,000 Euro has been spent on the restoration uh, of Tinnakill House here. Uh, behind me we have a, the actual uh, building. Uh, the walls have been uh, built up to the wall plate with the exception of the two uh, boundary walls uh, in the main hallway. When, the, when those two walls are built up uh, to wall plate level, it means that the house will be ready for um, for uh, re-roofing. Uh, this was a ma this will be a major ex uh, expenditure, and uh, we will be looking for uh, funding. Uh, to date, we have been funded very well from Leash County Council by way of grant, uh, by the National Heritage Council by way of grant, and by private donations and fundraising that we've done ourselves. Uh, there has been a substantial financial input by Kevin Lawler Fitzpatrick, the current owner uh, of the uh, property. Um, the, uh, I'd like to pay a tribute to uh, the generosity of Leash County Council uh, through the good offices of John Mulholland, the uh, Chief Executive, and uh, Catherine Casey, the uh, Heritage Officer. They have thrown, shown a tremendous interest in uh, this development and uh, hopefully they will be there to see us through to the final, uh, uh, th final uh, stages of the, the rebuilding. Uh, when the, when the uh, build is finished, 
Uh, we hope to have uh, a, a property which will be beneficial to the county and to uh, Ireland in general. It is the most historic house and uh, it is essential that it is restored because of the family that have come from it. Uh, Honest Pat Lawler and his three sons, James Finton, uh, Peter and uh, Richard. Uh, they have made substantial contributions to the history both of Ireland and, and Australia, uh, particularly... Peter, who is regarded as the father of Australian democracy. Uh, James Finton Lawler, uh, the eldest son of Honest Pat Lawler, uh, has made a massive contribution to Irish politics and he was the first nationalist to tie the question of the land, refer ran land reform uh, to the national aspiration for uh, independence. Uh, he has, his writings made, uh, had a great impact on uh, both uh, Patrick Pearce and uh, James Connolly, uh, leaders of the 1916 Rising and at a later stage on Eamon de Valera, who later became President of Ireland. The future of Tenekill. Many have asked, what of the future of Tenekill House? When the house is fully restored, it is intended to dedicate a room each to highlight the life achievements of Honest Pat Lawler MP and his three sons, James Finton, Richard and Peter. Indeed, the life story of any one of the above-mentioned personalities would fill all of the rooms of the entire house. It is unlikely that, throughout the length and breadth of the country, that the families of any house has produced a similar quartet who have had such an influence on the political and social life of Ireland, America and Australia. To date, there is no venue in Ireland that honours and reflects their achievements. What better place to do that than in their own home, Tinnakill House in Raheen, County Leash. The life of Honest Pat Lawler MP, his stance against the hated tide taxes, his friendship with Daniel O'Connell, the Liberator, who was a regular visitor to Tinnakill House, Honest Pat's opposition to the Act of Union, his contributions to the debates in Westminster and his establishment of the Reform Club are a, are a remarkable testimony to his commitment to Ireland. His eldest son, James Finton, despite indifferent health through his short life, is giant among Irish men who displayed a fearless courage and spirit in highlighting the terrible conditions of the small landholders and the farm labourers. He was the first nationalist to link the land question to the national aspiration of freedom and independence. His writings and policies were popular with Parik Pierce and James Connolly, two of the executed leaders of the Easter Rising, and with Eamon de Valera, later Taoiseach and President of Ireland. Another son, Richard Lawler MP, was a land reform agitator, anti-union opponent and reformer of the independent club set up by his father, Honest Pat Lawler. He was also involved in local politics of the day, both in Ireland and in, and in England, and his contributions to Westminster debates would reflect attitudes to Ireland and the Irish nation in general, and would make great study material for students of history. Richard, like his brothers James Finton and Peter, were all involved in the Young Ireland movement and took part in the abortive rising in Tipperary in 1848. What can be said of the other members of the illustrious quartet? Peter Lawler, leader and defender of the miners at the Eureka Stockade, fugitive from justice with a price on his head, later turned businessman and politician who became a national figure in Australia and who is universally known as the father of Australian democracy. He was the subject of four films and a two-part television series about his involvement in the events at Eureka. He is streets, electoral divisions, public buildings and a, even a university student accommodation named in his honour. It was at the Eureka Stockade that the famous Southern Cross flag, the unofficial emblem of Australia, first made its appearance. 
having been created by the women who stood by their men inside the stockade. Why should such a house as Tinnekeel not be restored? <clears throat> it has produced a quartet of remarkable people, but there are other members of the family who have also featured abroad, and they are the three other brothers who emigrated to America and fought in the American Civil War. Many of the American Lawler family have been involved in politics in the state of Wisconsin and are still very much to the fore there. The forego foregoing is a very short resume of not four but seven members of this family, which is surely a, an unique record which must be commemorated by the restoration of Tinnekill House. To date over €100,000 has been spent on work on the house, but to completely bring it back to its former glory it will require many multiples of that amount. That is why the committee is launching a GoFundMe appeal. The committee has received grants from Leash County Council, the National Heritage Council and has held many fundraising events and is now making this international appeal to complete the work. The current owner of the house, Kevin Law Fitzpatrick, a direct descendant of Honest Pat Lawler, made a considerable financial contribution to the work. Details of the GoFundMe appeal are available by pressing the attached link.